the time you can do so. All right, so let's uh, let's start with uh, with templates. I have WordPerfect X4 launched right here, and I'm going to use the WordPerfect mode. Uh, you, this is on a screen that perhaps you you see anymore because you can turn it off, so you don't actually have to see it every time you launch the application. But WordPerfect mode just means that the toolbars, the shortcut keys that you're used to, are all are all the same. What I'm going to do is start with a template, and what I want to do is kind of take you through customizing an existing template, modifying it. Nothing, uh, nothing maybe out of the ordinary, but something that we may not be doing uh, or taking advantage of some of the some of the tools that are built in. Excuse me. So I'm going to come over to File and open up New from Template. Now in this scenario, what I've done is we're working on. Uh, on a newsletter. I didn't want to get into too many office specifics because of different industries and how uh, different people use it. So we're going to kind of keep this on a personal example. In the Perfect Export, we actually ship with a number of templates. Now, now one of the advantages I find is that you can look through different categories and so on, but if I just want to look at WordPerfect templates, I can select WordPerfect and it lists all of the uh, WPD template documents that I can work from. Now, these are somewhat generic, but what is nice is that rather than working from perhaps a blank document and creating a template, I can work from an existing one and reuse it to create something new. So in this case, I'm going to work with a newsletter. Now, instead of hitting the Create button, I'm going to come down to the Options button. And in here, I have, uh, I have a, a number of things I can do. I can actually move projects around. So what we saw before are these different categories or, or ways to catalog or, or organize some of our templates. You can actually copy and move projects around so that they're in locations that you find easier uh, to work with. You can also remove projects that you're not using. You can also create categories as well. So if you have, for instance, uh, a type of uh, or a, a category of templates that you want to work with, say it's uh, um, reporting that you may be doing, or maybe you're uh, working with, in this case, different types of newsletters or something of that nature, you can create and organize all of your own. What I'm going to start with, though, is rather than create a, a WordPerfect template from scratch, I'm going to edit an existing one. So pardon my mouse, I'm just going to move my GoToMeeting panel out of the way. I know you can't see it, but it, uh, it's kind of blocking some of my real estate. So here is an existing newsletter. Now, I've opened it up to edit it, so you'll notice that in the property bar, just above the, the property bar, I have this uh, template bar where I can start adding, removing objects, creating prompts, and so on. What I want to do is take this existing template, let me just scroll down so you can kind of see what's in here, and uh, change it, modify it for something I want to use. So it already has a heading set up, it already has columns have been added. It just kind of saves me from doing any uh, additional work if I choose to start with a blank document. So first thing I want to do is I want to build prompts. And prompts are ways that we can quickly enter information and have it automatically populate our document. Why that's useful is because instead of manually coming in here and typing my title, summer vacation or, or whatever it may be, uh, I can save a step. So let me show you how I would do that very quickly. With the template open for editing, if I come over to Build Prompts, I get a new dialog box and I can start naming these prompts whatever I need to. So let's add a couple of things that I know every time I create a newsletter I'm going to want to add some unique information. So I'm going to add a new prompt and I'm going to call it Heading. Now I can choose to link information if I have a, an address book um, hooked in, so if I need uh, email information from uh, an address or a contact or any other information I can choose to have it automatically populate. I'm going to say no because this is going to be some straight text. So I say OK. I want to create a subtitle perhaps. Say OK. And we'll add one more and we'll make it the date. All right. All right, so I have three prompts. Now I have to choose where I want to place them. So heading would make sense to go at the top, so I'm going to move my cursor to the top of my page, and I'm going to choose heading and paste. So that's where my new prompt or the, the information will be, will be inserted. I'm going to do the same thing for my subtitle, and I'm going to paste, and lastly, we'll do date and paste. Okay, and I'm going to say OK. So it's preparing those prompts, it says preparing template. 
Now at this point, this, uh, this example has a couple of things I don't really want to see. Uh, one of them is you'll notice that there's a watermark graphic, which means that I can't click on it to select it. It's actually been uh, inserted as a watermark in the background. Now I can go into the menus and actually start working with the watermark feature, but again, one of the advantages with WordPerfect is the access you have to reveal codes. So I can see the formatting, I can see all of the, the, the tags that have been added to make my document look the way it does. Now as a tip, if you come up to the View menu, you have the option to choose Reveal Codes from here. You also have a shortcut key, Alt F3. Uh, there is a, another kind of hidden feature, which I do like, is that over by the scroll bars, you'll notice my mouse is in the bottom right. You'll see that just, bef just after the, uh, the Go To buttons, this little bar, I get a, a double-headed arrow. If I actually click and hold my mouse and drag that up, you'll see it's actually opening up my Reveal Codes window. If I can click and resize just from that bottom. I discovered that by accident once actually when I, <laughs> when I lost some of my shortcut keys. So it was very handy to find that. So the reason I'm showing this is that if I come up to the top of my document, you can see that I, where my cursor is located in the, in the Reveal Codes window. And I'm, I shouldn't assume, but I suspect that those of you on the line actually have used Reveal Codes and know it and love it uh, with WordPerfect. But what I can see is that here's where my watermark has been added. So in this instance for me, I can select that Reveal Code. And if I click and hold and drag it out of that Reveal Code window, and drop it out into the ether over here, it automatically removes that code. I have had some users who you know, have spent years dealing with and working with reveal codes not realize that you can actually click and drag and drop codes out to have them automatically deleted. So that's kind of a handy, handy feature as well. So I'm just going to peel down this reveal code window and have it disappear for me. So a quick way to edit a couple of things. Now I have, uh, I have actually created this template more than once to make sure that what I show you is going to work. Uh, so what I'm going to do is actually open up the template that I that I'd already created. Before I do that, what I'd like to show you is a couple of uh, couple of things here. With templates, uh, you actually have the option to assign particular menus uh, and keyboard shortcuts or keyboards to uh, each template. So in this case, if I have a particular template, I can actually assign certain menus to appear or certain uh, keyboard shortcuts to appear and so on. So every time I open that template, I have the features and the tools that I want to use accessible right away. Description is always a good idea so you know what you are actually creating. Use for something of that nature. Okay. Uh, I'm actually going to close this template. I'm not going to save the, the changes. And I'm going to go through the process of if I had already created this template, now I'm going to start using it. So I'll go back to File and New from Project. And I did save one earlier as, let me come down into Creative Projects. I did create one called Family Newsletter Layout. So instead of opening up to edit this template, what I want to do is actually use it. So I'm going to create a new document based on that template. Now, the macros here that have been embedded are things such as prompts and so on, so there are, uh, it is always going to ask you for permission to run anything before doing so. In this case, I know I've created them, I know what they're going to be for, so I'm going to enable those for you. All right, so this is where those prompts that I had added earlier start showing up. So it's easier for me and faster, especially if I'm doing something like this on an ongoing basis, is to have prompts available. So instead of actually having to navigate through the document to insert new text. And let's say it's going to be June to August because we're too busy having fun to keep writing newsletters. All right. So I just enter the information here. As soon as I say OK, it populates it throughout the document wherever I've placed those prompts. So in this case, I actually have included it as a header as well. 